title Caterpillars and Handle with Care. So we're going to go through um, not all. There, there are over 5,000 species of Lepidoptera east of the Mississippi. So certainly don't have time, and I don't have pictures of all those either. So I'm going to share. Most of these are my photos. I got one Phil Meeks photo, and I've got uh, a couple things from Bug Guide that I shared. But uh, we'll go through some things uh, with caterpillar recognition and all that. Um, the main theme of this is that Lepidopteran, which are butterflies and moths, their caterpillars have chemical defenses, at least some of them have. Um, they'll have spines, and some of the caterpillars are harmless with their spines, but some of them have poison filled that can, or venom that can deliver a sting. Uh, there's also a term called urticating hairs a good word to know as a master naturalist. Uh, <laughs> these contain compounds that are irritating, can cause itching or rashes, or if you're hypersensitive, they can cause very severe reactions and send you to the emergency room. Um, urtica is Latin for nettle, and we all know stinging nettles have the little hairs on them, uh, and they're in the genus urtica. Um, other urticating hairs that are kind of famous are tarantula spiders, by the way. They have urticating hairs, at least some species. Um, many caterpillars, in fact, I'd say most of them are safe to handle. But a uh, little warning here, it's kind of like with mushrooms, just because any, you can handle any of them, uh, just like you can eat any of the mushrooms. But some of them, uh, the after effects are not good. And same with caterpillars. So you're not sure about a caterpillar, you probably want to take precautions and uh, use gloves uh, with handling. So uh, the other thing is I go through the caterpillars, I put in a little color code. If the name of the caterpillar is in red, that's red alert, red alert, danger Will Robinson, um, mm -hmm. stay away from those. If it's a black text, then those are considered um, um, safe to uh, touch or handle. So we'll start out, and I'm following a guideline. I've got a caterpillar book that I'll uh, show at the end of the, the uh, slides as one of my resources. And so I'm kind of following the order of these uh, as they appeared in my caterpillar book. And this is a spiny oak slug caterpillar. Most of the slug caterpillars have the little spines on them. Uh, and this is one that has the uh, venom in those spines and uh, you don't want to touch at all. There's some variants on the slug caterpillars and spiny oak slugs come in all different colors. Here's another one, same insect, um, uh, just a different color pattern to them. They have a wide variety. Um, one of the things that's difficult about doing caterpillar recognition is that they change. They don't all look alike and uh, younger caterpillars look quite different than older mature caterpillars. So as they shed their skins, uh, each stage is called an instar. And as they grow, the instars often change uh, colors and patterns and the look. So sometimes it's difficult to, when you see a young instar, you may not be able to find a picture of that in um, uh, the uh, textbooks and all. Anyway, so spiny oak slugs, that's a no touch. Uh, here's another slug caterpillar that a lot of sites say is uh, a problem, but recently I've come across two very well-respected entomologists who are saying that uh, the uh, monkey slug is not. In fact, the guy at the caterpillar lab says he's been trying for years to get one to sting him and uh, no reaction. So. Um, this is obviously one of the weirdest caterpillars you'll ever want to see. This one I found at last year's naturalist rally uh, on our insect hike. Uh, they feed on a wide variety of plants. I've seen them on dogwood, I've seen them on oak, I've seen them on um, all different types of plants. Uh, that is a caterpillar. It will become a moth called a hag moth. And they have the little hairiness to them that look like they might be urticating spines, but again, recent um, sites that I've uh, investigated say that uh, this probably is not stinging or maybe it might be the rare one in a thousand that is sensitive to it, but uh, most people are saying it was probably put in a category because most of the other hag moths are um, dangerous to touch. 
Um, years ago, I had one of these land on my windshield up at Mountain Empire. It dropped down from a tree and landed on my windshield. So this is a photo I took probably about 20 years ago of the underside of the monkey slug, which is, uh, looks like something from outer space, <laughs> almost uh, showing a weird thing. Their uh, abdomens are kind of transparent uh, from this angle. In fact, Caterpillar Lab likes that because they can put them under a microscope and examine the digestive system of a caterpillar uh, because of the transparency that they seem to have. Here's one more picture of another one. This was in our yard years ago on a dogwood leaf. Uh, the colors can vary a little bit and the uh, little extension arms can vary a little bit. Um, I saw one um, speculation that they think this could be a mimic of a tarantula spider. That might be an advantage to this, that it could fool something into thinking it was uh, a spider of some kind. But anyway, it's certainly the weirdest caterpillar uh, that you'll probably ever run across, the monkey caterpillar. Uh, this one I bet all of you know, one of the more dangerous, in fact, its uh, species name is Stimulia. Uh, tells it all. The saddleback caterpillars are quite painful if you accidentally brush against one. Uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful caterpillar, I think. It will turn into an, uh, an interesting little moth. Um, but this was also at last year's Natural Rally. Found this one and got some good shots. Back there. close up, uh, look at those spikes. Uh, and those spikes are tipped with venom. And I've been stung a few times accidentally. It feels like a wasp. Uh, has stung you. Uh, it lasts for maybe uh, 30 minutes or more uh, and uh, then it kind of goes away but it, it's a pretty painful sting to encounter one of these. Um, their defense though doesn't defend them against uh, invertebrate things. Here's one that I found at Mountain Empire last fall and it's been parasitized by the braconid wasp. Uh, we'll see another uh, picture of Braconin wasps on a tobacco worm later on. Uh, but the wasps lay the eggs inside the caterpillar. The larvae of the caterpillar fed on, uh, larvae of the wasps fed on the caterpillar, but they avoid any vital organs. They want the caterpillar to keep living while they feed on inside. And then once they've reached the site, they crawl outside. They, the skin of the caterpillar and then spin a little cocoon. And inside the cocoon will be uh, adult wasps that will come out and continue the cycle. So the stinging spines, while they will uh, affect uh, vertebrate, and maybe a bird might not mess with them, or certainly human beings are not safe away from them, uh, they don't uh, defend against the uh, braconid wasp parasite. Um, one of the things that, that got me thinking about doing this program. I bet several of you have seen this. This has been on Facebook for the last maybe two weeks or so of the lady uh, near Richmond in New Kent that um, brushed up against a flannel moth caterpillar, uh, which uh, is an odd looking thing, kind of looks like a tribble or maybe a, a bad comb over of some kind. A toxic toupee is the name some folks have given to it. And uh, fortunately, this caterpillar doesn't show up too often in Virginia. It's a real problem uh, in uh, further south, particularly in the Gulf Coast states, from what I've read and seen. Uh, it's one of the most powerful uh, sting uh, that, that can be effective. This lady went to the emergency room with, with the uh, uh, things that she received on her leg when she brushed up against it accidentally. Uh, there's another flannel moth that uh, is around. It's called a black wave flannel moth. And this is a very, very young instar, one of those that I found on a hike a few years ago. This looks like a big bowl of lint or something. The urticating spines are in within those um, white hairy things on, on it. Now, eventually, this caterpillar will, will molt several times, and in its adult stage, you will look, have that toupee look of the uh, other flannel caterpillar. But that little thing uh, is an early instar of the flannel caterpillar. So uh, avoid, because um, the stinging spines are there hidden among all those hairs. Um, a different looking flannel caterpillar is the white flannel. 
excuse me here, we got a truck gone down the street. I hope you can still hear me. Um, uh, these are, uh, I've seen the moths a lot. They're throughout our area. In fact, I've seen several of them at Natural Tunnel. Uh, and again, this is one that uh, if you do see, it's a beautiful uh, looking caterpillar, but the urticating hairs are there. You definitely uh, would uh, react if you touch uh, any of the flannel moth caterpillars. Uh, here's a safe one. I got this just the other day of a mountain empire. This is one of my favorite little caterpillars to find um, on uh, locust trees, locust leaves. If you see a locust leaf that's been folded up and folded over, take a peek inside and you likely find a silver spotted skipper cat caterpillar. Those yellow things that look like eyes aren't really eyes, those are just markings to give it a, a strange look. And this is a, uh, a pretty good specimen that I was able to find the other day. These are fun little caterpillars to hunt for and find. Uh, they, they uh, uh, on different things, I got one on a bean leaf in my garden right now, real tiny one. Uh, so uh, uh, they're usually found on locust uh, trees and perfectly safe to handle. Uh, most butterfly and skipper cat caterpillars are safe. Uh, there's one exception that we'll get to in a little bit. Um, here's a pipevine swallowtail. Looks scary. Got those uh, little uh, pointy things all over it. Um, but it's perfectly safe unless you try to eat it. Uh, this is a toxic caterpillar that uh, uh, is not, uh, it's very distasteful to predators and therefore, and the adult butterfly has that same uh, issue. Uh, but the caterpillar safe is perfectly safe to handle, as are uh, the other uh, swallowtail caterpillars. Uh, a few years back, I had, we had a giant swallowtail come in on a rue plant, the biggest swallowtails we have in, uh, and not often seen around here. The caterpillar just looks like a big old bird dropping um, as it's camouflage um, and uh, perfectly safe to handle. Uh, here's an eastern tiger swallowtail caterpillar with the fake eyes that make it kind of look like a little snake. And this one was is disturbed when I picked the leaf to take the picture of it and it's flashing what are called osmaterium. Um, and those uh, produce a um, uh, reeking aroma. Uh, some say it, it kind of smells like vomit or something like that. It's uh, it's got a mild acid to it, I think, too. But it's so you don't want to get that on your uh, hands or you'll have smelly hands. But other than that, caterpillar is safe to touch and have crawl around you. Uh, to show how caterpillars can change, here's another eastern tiger swallowtail. But look at the different color of the caterpillar. Um, they, uh, some of them are green, some of them are brownish. Uh, a lot of times they'll turn, they'll actually change color from green to brown as they're getting ready to uh, make their pupa or their uh, chrysalis and all. Of course, this is our uh, Virginia State insect. I like to show this picture to the kids and say, what's our Virginia State insect look like? And then I show them this and they think, whoa, well, why would you pick that? Then of course we know it's the uh, black and yellow butterfly. That, uh, that's so beautiful that it was chosen. Uh, one other swallowtail, this is the uh, swallowtail gets on your parsley and dill and fennel, the eastern black swallowtail, again, perfectly safe to handle as are most caterpillars of, of butterfly. And I had to throw in my favorite swallowtail caterpillar, it has to be the spice bush swallowtail. Uh, they like to fold themselves up in the leaves to hide and come out during the day to eat. And when they reach their final instar, uh, boy, that sure looks like a snake staring back at you. It might uh, scare away a bird or something. They also have an osmaterium they can flash out if you uh, disturb them. But again, they don't always look like that. The previous picture was the adult or final instar caterpillar. This is uh, probably a second instar caterpillar. And at this point, it looks more like a bird dropping on the leaf as this protection. You can see little eye spots starting to form, but again, quite different look to it uh, in the younger stage, or in star, as they call. And one more um, five bush swallowtail picture showing one with a chrysalis. I had three of them one year, two years ago, that I raised uh, some caterpillars, and two of them, including the chrysalis, there 
made a butterfly, but that poor caterpillar there, unknowns to me, uh, had been uh, parasitized by a rather large wasp. It had one egg that was laid in it. And so it went ahead and made a chrysalis, but inside that chrysalis, there was a little larva of a wasp that was feeding. And eventually, uh, instead of a butterfly coming out of the chrysalis, there was a, uh, a wasp that came out of there. So again, defenses that caterpillars have, the, the snake eyes might scare away a bird or might scare away a, a, a person from, from the caterpillar, but the uh, parasitic wasp knew that that was a good food for their young. Uh, here's a spiny looking dude. This is a question mark caterpillar. We get a few of these in our yard from time to time. They feed on elm uh, and a few other plants. Uh, very spiny looking. You think, wow, I don't want to touch that. That, that would be, there's no poison or venom in those uh, spines. Now spines might tickle a little bit. So they're kind of firm, so they might, uh, you, you know, you don't want to grab it uh, tight tightly or anything like that, but uh, the, uh, there's no poison on those spines, perfectly safe uh, to handle. This guy, however, and it's something I learned recently, I really wasn't aware of this, I, don't, I haven't found these caterpillars, this is Phil Meek's photo, uh, he had a treasure trove of morning cloak caterpillars in his yard this spring, he shared a chrysalis with me, it was very nice of him. Uh, but these do have some venom on the tips of their spine. And it's one of the few butterflies that I know of that uh, you, you don't want to handle unless you're using gloves. Uh, now, it might be uh, that uh, some people are more sensitive than others. So it could be that you could handle one and it wouldn't uh, affect you. But uh, it's uh, the literature that I've found uh, on bug guides from other places puts a warning on handling the morning cloak. And that's about the only butterfly I've come across that uh, you'd have to uh, be careful with. Uh, variegated fritillary, beautiful, beautiful caterpillar. Um, perfect safe to handle. This is on a pansy plant or a, a Johnny Jump Up. Uh, they feed on the violets and pansies. Um, they're, uh, again, ominous looking. You think with the colors that would warn you, but uh, perfectly safe to handle, uh, as is the great spangled fritillary. Again, spiny looking caterpillar there. Uh, these are very secretive. I uh, had been for Paxson discovering one while she was weeding flower bed years ago. I've never seen one other than this particular one. They're notorious for hiding and staying, and they'll overwinter. Uh, they say if you've got uh, areas of uh, um, violets in your yard, um, be careful around them. They might have small caterpillars that are spending the winter in there uh, that will come out in the spring and continue to feed and grow. So, uh, but they are very secretive. They hide during the day and only come out at night to uh, feed. Uh, another butterfly that has spiny caterpillars are silvery checker spots. Uh, this butterfly looks a lot like a pearl crescent. Uh, they feed on things on the uh, sunflower family. And, all. and they stay in groups for quite a while. As you can see, this group of young instars, probably second instar size caterpillars, are uh, staying in a big group like that on, on a leaf. Uh, here's a picture of probably third instar caterpillars. They'll so eventually get a little bit bigger. Um, but um, they are spiny, but again, no problems to handle. Um, hopefully, all of you can recognize the monarch. Caterpillar. Uh, the monarch is toxic to heat. You don't want to chew on one um, because of the milkweed toxins that it ingests, but perfectly safe and all to handle. Uh, there's a small one. This is at uh, Beth's uh, farm behind their store just this summer. Uh, we found a few little caterpillars and I took that picture. Here's one from a few years ago in Ohio uh, showing the frass or droppings underneath the caterpillar. A uh, good way to hunt for caterpillars sometimes is to look for the frass or droppings. You'll often see that before you'll see the caterpillar. Um, one of the biggest caterpillars, one I love to find, uh, but they're, they're around and about, but uh, don't come across them often enough to suit me, hickory horn devil caterpillar. Uh, it's moth, it's called a regal moth, it's also called a royal 
walnut moss. It's a bright orange and yellow moss, uh, V-shaped moss, a beautiful moss. But look at the uh, horns on that caterpillar. And this guy is uh, maybe you know four inches in length, uh, as uh, thick as your thumb, uh, but perfectly safe to handle. Uh, the uh, little spikes there have no toxins on them. Um, if you do run across one of those, uh, get a good picture of them sending to I'd love to, uh, to see these uh, caterpillars. They eventually bury themselves in the ground. They don't make a cocoon. Uh, they will tunnel in the ground to uh, make their pupa and come out the following spring. It's basically just one brood of, of these each year. Um, here's another in the silk moth kind of family, a uh, pretty good sized caterpillar. And this one is a danger. Notice the red print on the Io moth caterpillar. Those uh, little spiky uh, things are tipped with a toxin or poison and they can give you a pretty severe sting. Makes a beautiful moth, one of the silkworm moths. Um, years ago, I collected eggs from a moth and here's a group of young instars. Again, look at the difference in color. You wouldn't know uh, from the previous picture that they were the same uh, species necessarily. They're a good group of them. Uh, they have this many caterpillars, but again, wasps and other things are going to, uh, to uh, get a lot of them. So out of those caterpillars, probably only about uh, one in 10 uh, makes it to uh, adult size. And eventually makes a cocoon. This caterpillar will spin a cocoon. It's one of the silkworms, and make a, a pretty moth the following year. Here's another picture of the Io moth. The uh, red and white stripes are very distinctive on it. He's got red feet, uh, the pro legs there, on it. So uh, a very pretty caterpillar. When you went across one of these, uh, treat them with care. Um, another moth, a caterpillar that's related to the Io same general family of silk moths is the buck moth. Uh, I have not encountered one of these in all my life. Uh, I've heard horror stories about them. People, uh, they are one of the most painful caterpillars you can run into with the toxins they have on them. Their color varies. They can be a dark black. They can also be a brown and goldish color. Uh, so I had to borrow some photos from a bug guide for my presentation here uh, just to uh, point these out. And again, I guess the thing is, unless you're absolutely certain about some of these spiny caterpillars, you want to uh, treat them with care. Uh, if you're not sure of the ID, again, um, uh, it's probably to be best to be cautious, unless you want to be one of the folks that uh, gets stung on purpose to see how much it hurts. You see those guys on uh, Facebook here so often doing that. Anyway, uh, makes a beautiful moth, uh, but um, and they are in our region, but I've never run across any of them. They, uh, they're primarily found on oak uh, as their uh, food source. Um, most folks recognize this, although they might give the wrong name. This is not a, a um, tomato worm or tomato hornworm, but, but it's re closely related uh, tobacco hornworm, which will become what's called the Carolina stink. In fact, there are two hornworms that feed on tomatoes. One is the tomato worm, uh, which has a black horn. Uh, the uh, Carolina sphinx tobacco hornworm are the most common ones that I see. Uh, I haven't seen a true uh, tomato worm in years and years uh, anywhere, but the tobacco hornworm is around. And this one, again, is not going to make a moth because it has been parasitized by a braconid wasp. In fact, uh, the species is Cotesia congregata, and those are the cocoons. Those are not eggs. A lot of people think those are eggs on the outside of the caterpillar. No, the eggs were laid inside. The larvae of the wasps fed inside the caterpillar, and then when they're done feeding, they crawl outside and form the little cocoon. The caterpillar is still alive, but it's kind of in a zombie state. Uh, the wasps inject some chemicals in there to kind of turn the caterpillar into a poor zombie. Um, as uh, so they can survive, uh, the wasp will, but the caterpillar won't become a moth. Um, this is another sphinx moth. I just threw it in because I thought it's a cool looking caterpillar. It's a pretty good size. It's not quite as big as a, a tomato worm, but almost as big. It's a Pandora sphinx 
uh, well, that feeds on uh, grapevine and also Virginia creeper. And uh, came across one of these along the green belt years ago. Uh, and uh, I think it's uh, just an extremely cool looking uh, caterpillar. And it's a beautiful moth. It's one of the more beautiful sphinx moths that it will become eventually. So perfectly safe to handle. Uh, last year's naturalist rally, these were dropping out of the trees on where Paxton and I guess uh, Elizabeth, you were painting gourds uh, and all, I think, there at the, at the rally. Uh, and uh, this is a red humped oakworm, um, safe to handle, neat looking caterpillar. If they probably, after they fall down the ground, they're probably going to crawl off someplace to make their pupa in leaf litter uh, and all. That's the uh, nifty caterpillar that we found at last year's Naturals Rally. Uh, here's one in red, uh, danger, danger, the American dagger moth. This was on our fence a few years ago. Uh, they feed on a variety of hardwood trees. Uh, had one feeding on uh, um, red bud this year. This one, I think, was, had been feeding on our maple tree. Uh, they have a variety of colors, and those little hairs um, are do have some chemicals on them that will cause a rash or an itch. They won't really sting so much, but it's more like uh, a little uh, a rash that can be developed. And some people are sensitive. I've had them crawl on me and I've never had a problem. But other folks will say uh, uh, they can cause uh, an allergic reaction. So uh, that's one to be careful of. It's very, very pretty caterpillar. That's, that's cool, I found them um, in all. Um, years ago, again, uh, the uh, urticating hairs did not protect it from this uh, immature Chinese mantis who's devouring one uh, on a aluminum drain pipe there that had on our garage. I came across this uh, gruesome scene. What the um, mantis is doing is when they catch a caterpillar, sometimes the inside, the innards of the caterpillar contain some toxins, and so they will drain the caterpillar sometimes uh, to get those toxins out of their digestive system. And that's what evidently this one was doing here. Uh, one of my grosser pictures, I guess. But again, uh, uh, amazing uh, things you see in nature and, and insects and all. Um, here's another dagger moth. Most of the dagger moths that I've uh, researched are stated as having urticating hairs. Uh, this one, uh, I don't know. Uh, I didn't find any specific references about it, but I found references for other dagger moths, and so I'm putting this one in red. I'm going to be careful with it. Uh, we're renaming this one. The uh, species name, uh, the common name, uh, was not maple dagger moth, but uh, entomologists now are trying to promote the use of the maple dagger moth for its name rather than the uh, uh, original species name that uh, this one was given. Uh, tussock moss, true tussock moss. There are two species that are very common around here. There are several species, but the ones I see most often are this one, the defi definite tussock, uh, which uh, has urticating hairs. Uh, again, it produces a rash if you're sensitive to it. Uh, very pretty. It's got the toothbrush, the four brushes on that. The true tussock caterpillars have these. There's another group of caterpillars called tussocks, but they aren't really tussocks. Uh, they're in a different family. But this is the definite tussock. And this one is the most common tussock that we'll find around here. It's got a noisy blue jay. I don't know if you can hear that or not. Uh, white mark tussock has the red head or orange head and also uh, notice the uh, red dots on the lower part of the abdomen uh, that distinguishes it from the uh, other tussock that we saw. And it's got those four toothbrushes there. Uh, and the hairy, very hairy caterpillar. And uh, I, as a kid, I had these crawl on me and never got a reaction to them. Again, some people can be very sensitive to them. So you want to be careful when you run into one of these. Uh, woolly bears or woolly worms is the Isabella tiger moth. I think most of you know you can handle these guys. In fact, they even have woolly bear races in some uh, places around. Uh, they, uh, their spines are kind of stiff. They might tickle a little bit, but no poisons on them, no toxins to worry about. In fact, there's a point I had one on my hand. 
Uh, notice it's dropping off some of those hairs, but again, uh, no toxin or anything to uh, worry about that. That bird is really squawking behind it. Um, here's one that looks dangerous, and I'm not exactly sure about it. I couldn't find any references to this being uh, a problem, so I've got it in black. Uh, but it's one of those that when I run across them, I've always been careful with them. I don't uh, uh, handle one myself. But as far as I know, it's probably safe. It's one of the tiger moth uh, caterpillars. Uh, here's another tiger moth called the yellow bear. Uh, looks like it might be a problem, but as far as I can tell from research, uh, uh, does not uh, cause any uh, stinging reactions. Uh, like the name Virginian tiger moth or yellow woolly bear. Uh, these you see all over the place nowadays, fall webworm nests. Um, I don't know why they're called, well, I guess they're called fall webworms because you see them mostly in the fall, but you can see these in May, in the spring. Uh, there just aren't as many of them around. Uh, don't confuse this with tent caterpillars. Tent caterpillars are only in the spring and make their nests in the crotch of trees where fall webworm nests uh, envelop the leaves at the, end, at the ends of branches. And there's a nest of one. Uh, when they're small instars, they stay inside the nest. When they get big, they leave the nest and go crawling all different directions. They just spread themselves all over the place. Uh, they can feed on a whole big variety of plants uh, and all. And so this is a fall webworm. You see this a lot nowadays. Uh, the insect sites, someone's posting these two or three times a day. I'll see this caterpillar come up saying, what is it, what is it? Uh, it's, a, it's a pretty caterpillar. And they're perfectly safe to handle. No problems with, with fall webworm. Um, of course, their protection is supposed to be their web. Uh, th this May, I came across a web up at Mountain Empire uh, and found this ground crab spider that was really pigging out. He, it was, she, I guess, was having a feast uh, because that web didn't stop her from getting and feeding on the caterpillars that were inside. I've also read that there are wasps that can penetrate the webbing and get in there and lay their parasitic eggs. So uh, while the uh, webbing might deter vertebrate animals from getting in, uh, the uh, invertebrates have still found ways to uh, uh, get to, uh, to these caterpillars. Giant leopard moth, one of the cool, neat caterpillars. This one's rolled itself into a ball. When they do that, you can see the distinctive red markings. You'd think that would mean danger, but no, they're not gonna, there's no poison on these barbs. Uh, they are pretty stiff barbs. They will tickle you a little bit when you have one in your hand, um, but um, no, no uh, toxicity there makes a beautiful uh, leopard moth. It's a white moth with black leopard spots. Um, and this caterpillar actually lives through the winter and hibernates and doesn't make its cocoon until the spring. It will come out and continue feeding. So you might find these crawling around on a warm winter day, uh, getting a little snack to eat or moving around. Then they'll get back in the leaf litter uh, to uh, hunker down when it gets real cold. Uh, amazingly, they can survive uh, below zero temperatures. Uh, then in spring, they'll get out and feed a little bit more and then make a cocoon. And then uh, you know, uh, a couple weeks later, come out as a moth. Um, banded tussock moths. I've got it in black because as far as I can tell, these are probably OK. I didn't find any references to the banded tussock. Um, they sometimes lose those tufts that they have there. This is at last year's Naturalist Rally crawling around. This is on Bonnie's uh, display uh, board that she had at the Naturalist Rally, I remember, right across from our Master Naturalist display board. Um, here's another picture. They can vary in color a little bit. Some of them are whiter, some of them are yellow. The tufts can vary white or black um, and all. Uh, as far as I know, uh, they're, they're probably, well, I have had them crawl on me before and never experienced a problem. They're not a true tussock. They're really a tiger moth. But they were named tussock moth um, as a common name, but they're not in the family of the other tussocks that we saw earlier. Um, very close related. In fact, the moth 
of this species is a fitting image of the moth of the previous species. You can't tell them apart uh, unless you get them under a microscope. This is a sycamore tussock. Uh, you can tell the caterpillars apart pretty easily because sycamore tussock has the orange uh, tufts on its head. And also the picture doesn't show, but it'll have an orange head as well. Uh, and uh, they're safe to handle. Find them crawling around on you. This time of year, uh, both of these tussocks are uh, seen quite a bit uh, uh, this late in the fall. This one, though, you don't want to handle. The hickory tussock moth with the black and mark, black and white markings. That is in red uh, because they will produce a pretty uh, significant uh, allergic reaction to the uh, toxins on their urticating hairs. Um, so this is one to be careful with if you come across it, um, don't want to handle it. And our last moth of the night is another tussock. It's one of my favorites. I know it's one of Phil's favorites. He, he likes uh, when we find one of these, it's on a milkweed plant or on a dog bait plant. This is a milkweed tussock moth. It uh, looks like it's been knitted out of some yarn and, and all. It's a black and orange and white. Uh, it's interesting how many different insects feed on milkweed and have the black and orange and white colors. The adult monarch butterfly has those colors. All the milkweed bugs are orange and black. Uh, milkweed beetles are orange and black. And the final instar of the milkweed tussock uh, moth uh, has that orange and black marking. It wouldn't be good to taste. You don't want to bite one of them. Uh, but as far as touching them, you can you can pet them and, and all, and they're perfectly fine. Um, here's the same caterpillar. Last year, I had I found on my milkweed uh, an egg mass, and so I was able to get pictures of all the different instars of them. And I'll share that this is the second instar of the caterpillar. Again, they're fuzzy, but you wouldn't guess just seeing those caterpillars that it's the same caterpillar as the adult. Again, it shows you how. Uh, they change as they molt their skins and all. Also, the big group. Um, when they got about this size, I found a whole bunch of paper wasps coming in and picking them off one by one. So while it looks like there are, you know, uh, dozens and dozens and dozens of caterpillars, I probably only had about seven or eight uh, that made it to adult size last year because of the predators. Uh, a bird might get them, but mostly I was seeing paper wasps. They love caterpillars to uh, put in their uh, paper wasp nests. Uh, the wasps don't eat the caterpillars, but their young feed on them. Um, that's why it's good to have paper wasps if you're a gardener around, they'll get your cabbage worms and some other things. Uh, anyway, that's my final picture here. Here's a nice little pair of the milkweed tussock moths. Don't you just want to pet those little guys? They're so, so soft and, and uh, uh, cute there. Uh, that the uh, again looks like someone just took some yarn and, and knitted them up uh, like that. So perfectly safe to handle. If you do find them, uh, very good. You can look for them on milkweed plants. Uh, there there might still be a few around this late in the year. Uh, oops, going the wrong way there. Um, I always like to share some resources. Uh, the best guide for caterpillars that I know of right now is uh, the Caterpillars of North America. It's a Princeton field guide uh, by David Wagner. Um, I've shared on our Master Naturalist side occasionally, I'll share something from the Caterpillar Lab that's a nonprofit up in New England. Uh, and they post almost daily things about caterpillars and uh, from live Facebook things. If you don't follow them, but if you like caterpillars and all, I highly recommend you look them up uh, on Facebook. Uh, bug Guide is my go-to site for most insect things. Again, so just Google Bug Guide if you're looking up, uh, trying to identify any kind of insect or spider for that matter. And um, there's a Facebook group uh, that I joined that they post uh, cool pictures of butterfly and moth caterpillars. And there are a couple folks on that site that are really, really good. They, you know, I hardly see anybody stump them uh, with caterpillar. Um, and again, when you think that uh, just east of the Mississippi, uh, eastern United States, you're talking about 5,000 or more different species of caterpillars you might run into. Um, 
no one, I don't think, knows all of them, but uh, it's a good site to uh, find out things about Caterpillar. So uh, any questions at this point, or as I wrap things up, anybody want to unmute or, or type in a question that Phil can read to me if someone puts in a question? I'm not hearing much. Or I can't see the uh, text box in this view on here. Um, I'm going to stop my share at this point. Okay, now I Yeah. This is Linda Hubbard. And I'll, I'll ask the stupid question. Um, what is NSTAR? I've heard you label most of these. Yeah. NSTARs are, is a term used for each molt of a caterpillar. When the egg hatches, the first little, little tiny caterpillar that comes out is referred to as its first NSTAR. And they'll eat and eat and eat until they can't eat anymore because their skin, they, their outer skin can only hold so much. So they have to molt out of that skin and shed their skin and come out as a new caterpillar. And that would be the second star. And then it would continue. Uh, most caterpillar uh, species of Lepidoptera usually go through four, maybe five instars uh, as they uh, develop. And again, uh, as I pointed out, uh, one instar from another may not look alike. Now, monarchs all pretty much look alike. Each little instar has pretty much the same little striping and colors. But many other caterpillars, uh, the young instars don't look anything at all like the last instar caterpillar. And that's the one you usually see in a textbook is that last instar. And so that, that's part of what makes caterpillar identification tough when you run into a smaller one. You may not be able to find a source that shows you what, what that one is. That's a good question, Linda. Very good question. Thank you. Anything else about caterpillars? About 45 minutes or so, I guess. Okay, so that's what I was kind of aiming for. I didn't want to carry it away with too many things. So hopefully that will get you thinking about as you run across some things. Uh, and again, my warning is just be careful, especially with children and all of, you know, that, uh, it, it might be safe. Uh, it might not be uh, reactive to it, but there are some cases where, where a caterpillar can put you in the emergency room if you're extremely sensitive to the, uh, to the species. Okay, um, I'm going to share my screen again.